to Killer Fun, where we explore the intersection of crime and entertainment every other week. I'm Christy, and today, today, we have a very special, super fun episode for you. Our friends over at PredictoCast, Josh and Skinner, are taking some time off a well-deserved break from their show, and we did a takeover, and it was so much fun fun. We had such a good time with it. It was a ridiculous movie. The way their show works is they watch the first 10 minutes of a movie that they don't know anything about. And then they make predictions about what's going to happen for the rest of the movie. And so we took over their format and went ahead and did that. And it was so much fun. We watched we watched a movie called pret a or Ready to Wear in English. It was released in France first and then got a release in the U.S. Um, it's got this big, huge all-star cast. It's utterly ridiculous and fun in a whole bunch of ways. And this is the prediction portion of that episode. It's us. We watched the first 10 minutes, and then we made some pretty wild and fanciful predictions about what was going to happen next. And it was so much fun. So totally take a listen and I'll catch up with you back at the end after you've heard the prediction portion from PredictoCast. I'm Christy. I'm Jackie. And welcome back to Killer Fun. Uh, no. Well, what? Oh no, this is PredictoCast. Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. <laughs> so Josh and Skinner taking a well-deserved break and we're so happy for them. And so that they can have a break, we're filling in. We're from Killer Fun where we explore the intersection of crime and entertainment every other week. And we are delighted to take up the reins and cover a movie that we know nothing about. It's so excited because, you know, we were going to maybe do this movie on Killer Fun because we explore, as you said, the intersection of crime and entertainment. So, But we do a lot of predicting ourselves when we start (laughs) watching things, you know, and um, I'm a little nervous, I got to say, because I got a record to uphold. and I think the pressure might really screw me up here. So, um, but this is fun. Yeah. Okay. So we're watching a movie that's called Ready to Wear. It was released in France first, I believe, and it's called Pret-a-Porter in French, which literally means ready to wear. That's the direct translation of it. So unlike Josh and Skinner, who know nothing about the movie they're watching, I know three things about this movie. What do you know? I know that it has a Prince song in it called Get Wild. And I know that because I also co-host a show about Prince called The Mountains in the Sea. So there's that. So that's how I learned about this movie. Okay. I know that there's a murder in it. And once I saw that there was a murder in it, I knew that I really wanted to see this movie, despite the fact that it's not streaming anywhere. I found a DVD of it, and which is telling me it may not be a very good movie, despite the fact that it has a lot of really, really, really famous people in it. I mean, a lot. It is a stacked cast. In the first 10 minutes. I mean, I was like, I didn't know Lyle Lovett was in this. I didn't know... Forrest Whitaker was in this. Me either. <laughs> and I know Julie Roberts is in it. Sophia because, Loren. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people. Yeah. And Julia Roberts was the only one that I really knew was in it because she's on the cover of the DVD. So I knew three things about this movie going in, but I know nothing about the plot other than the fact that there's a murder, which I thought made it perfect for us to come on and try and guess what's going to happen in this movie. Absolutely. Well, and I guess I knew two things because I did okay. not know that there was a Prince song in it. Okay. So that's cool. But I did know there was a murder because we had discussed maybe doing it on Killer Fun. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I knew that it was a stacked cast. Okay. That's kind of what I okay. knew. Okay. I mean, really... We were really confused when this started (laughs) because we're looking at a man through a window and he's shopping and it says Christian Dior. He's looking at ties and he walks out of the shop where we've been watching him through the window in his big fur hat. And he's got this 
package, a Christian Dior package. He purchased a tie. And we, he walks out, and oh, he's in Red Square. And oh, some credits come up, and they're in Russian. And I'm like, hey, Christy, <laughs> is this like the Russian release? Because it wasn't just that there's Russian on the screen. There was also closed captioning. Y- and yes. so I was like, uh, what, what now? <laughs> But we continued watching. I'm like, I hope it's not all in Russian, but if it is. Well, thankfully the DVD is like bilingual because we got to Paris and now it's in French. Yeah. But alas, it was a bit of a, a film decision. The director decided, and that was kind of nice. It could have put you in the place, right? Yeah. Russia. Like, okay. And then in Paris. Yeah. And I have to say something. He bought two ties. Oh, he did. He bought two ties. Oh, I didn't notice that he bought two ties. And there's two people wearing them. Distinctive ties. Distinctive ties. And he sent one to Paris. Yes, to And a then man. Mr. Fashion Man got chided for his ugly tie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and then did. ugly tie came uh, walking up the escalator at the airport with his big Russian hat. Yes. And they both had the same tie on. Yes. It was blue and it was ugly. And somebody even asked him, he went to... Uh, like a fashion, I don't know what you call that. Like it's an office where they work and do the fashion and fittings and things. I don't know if you call that a studio, probably a, probably studio. a studio. Anyway, somebody comments on his tie and asked him if it's new. And he said, Oh no, it's old. Like he's yeah. had it a long time, but he literally just had it delivered to his house. Yeah. And where he, he lives actually with Sophia Loren. Looks like he's confused when he opens it, but then he starts reading a letter. Uh huh. Blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, he's got a story to tell. It's uh-huh. an old tie. Uh huh. To be fair, it does look like something that was made in the nineteen like sixties. Uh huh. But whole, not in a cool way. Maybe not. At least not with his outfit. <laughs> I don't think it goes with like a three piece suit. Yeah, it and was like a little a, too casual for that. If you can have casual ties, it looked a little too hipster. Honestly, like okay. you put that on a right man bun, it might look good. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So Sophia Loren speaks French. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she's got a little white dog. She chides this little dog in French for pooing on the carpet. And yeah. Thai man who just received the tie just walks right through it. Yeah, on it. And then on to carpet. It was because it was in the foyer area outside her door right and yeah. he walks that stuff right into yeah. his like dressing area with a beautiful rug right. and i was like Mm-mm. this is person with too much money they just don't care they know somebody else will clean it up and yeah, yeah. But- and she doesn't like time man sophia loren we don't know her name i don't know who time man is i'm just gonna call him time Ty- that's man. what i wrote him in, in well time man number one and then there's russian time man yeah he's hat man yeah, He's whole hat man. Fur yeah. hat man and tie man. Tie man's the one who got yeah, that. Yeah, talk about an outfit that that tie does not go on. Yeah, <laughs> with a big fuzzy hat. It does not no. look good with the Russian topper hat. No. 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 There's Kitty Porter, a reporter with a very heavy, heavy southern accent who's covering... Fashion Week in Paris, and that's Kim Basinger. Yeah, and let's put that Southern accent oh, a little in quotes. Awful. It's, it's pretty bad. Bad. It's like guest star on Golden Girls. Bad. You know, like when the guests would come on and supposed to be Blanche's relatives, and they had the Southern accent that you just wanted to, you know, slap right out of their mouth. It was no good. Yeah, it was not really good. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Sophia Loren ends up at backstage at a dog show catwalk it's like a fashion show it's for, like a fashion show with dogs. dogs yeah and <laughs> the right said fred uh catwalk song oh, is yes. playing which they're I thought too was, sexy uh-huh yeah. oh yeah that's what it is oh my gosh i thought it was funny a pregnant model comes in to this designer's studio, studio area workspace thing. and that was apparently a big surprise yeah yeah what I liked about that scene was that um, when Thai Man is saying hello to her and talking about, oh, when did this happen? And she looks him dead in the eye and says, about eight and a half months ago. <laughs> yeah, but she's looking at him with this eyeball that's like, 
Uh, Ooh, do you think he's eight the dad? and a half months ago? Ooh, yeah, like pretty oh. poignant. And then he's all like, avoid, 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 avoid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <gasps> he's the dad. I wonder That's if a he predi- is. Prediction number one. That's a prediction. <laughs> So Thai man wearing the steward tie still goes to meet someone at the airport. It's hat man also wearing the same tie. The reporter Kitty Potter is also at the airport with her crew, like a boom mic and a all <laughs> camera up. and everything. Mm-hmm. And then with, there's like a bunch of famous people. Lyle Lovett's there. He's from Texas. The lady he was talking to, I can't place. I know her name. I've seen her. I can't remember either. I, but I thought it was so funny because she's like, the next oh, time. from Texas. Can you say thank you, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Julie Roberts has lost her luggage in Houston because she's afraid of flying. Uh, yeah, her story was so funny. It was cute. And she's so adorable. And she's got like such an authentic shame. Uh-huh. Because the lady is like, oh, you lost your luggage. You reported over there. And she's like, no, no, no. <laughs> I lost it in, in Houston in the bar because I'm afraid to fly. So it was, you know, getting some courage, if you know what I mean. Uh-huh. So basically, she got drunk, left her luggage. And now she's landed in Paris. She has no luggage and can't speak French. Yeah. So pretty awesome. Yeah. What was really funny is all these like famous people like these and these models and everybody's there and they're all very, very confused on how like the baggage claim works. Yeah. Cause they're used to somebody else handling it for I them. I guess so. But apparently it was a very difficult situation for them and they're all standing <laughs> around like not understanding like how to pull luggage and how to find it. And I was like, oh, oh, OMG, I would have to get out of there. That would drive me crazy. Yeah. yeah. People who are incapable of handling themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is like basic life skills stuff. Basic life skills. Now, to be fair, this was what, in the 90s? Yeah. So I guess in some ways, there's probably enough people in the 90s who weren't frequent enough flyers that you wouldn't have that like flow These chart are down. These famous people. They fly a lot. I, that's what I feel like. I mean, obviously, Julia Roberts' character isn't a famous person. The, but, but she's wh- the only one who knows where her luggage is, and it's in Houston in a bar. <laughs> yes. That's, that's super fair. But I think she's going to be uh, conscripted to walk the catwalk. Oh, I, I feel a little pretty woman thing coming on. Oh, yes. She, someone's <laughs> they going to put her in clothes somewhere, right? Well, I yeah, <laughs> have to. You have to dress her up. She is the doll of Hollywood. Well, yeah, but she doesn't have any other clothes. Well, they do have to do that. <laughs> so but I think they're gonna. Fi- I think they're gonna discover her. And because oh, okay. remember the Prego model, uh-huh. she just told her that she can't do. And so the designer was like, "It's okay, it's okay." So they kind of need another one. But why? Why are they gonna find her? Are they gonna like? She's got to be a pawn in something, right? Like, is Tie Man and Hat Man going to enlist her unknowingly to help them with some sort of scheme? Well, I'm just gonna say the bump. So she bumps into the lady that she ends up talking to and telling the story, and she kind of bumps into her in a weird way because they're like standing in the hallway, and she's standing like sort of walking down a wall. And sort of stops towards the wall and then turns around backwards. And that's while she bumps into the lady. And it felt like a maybe, forced. yeah, maybe mm. a little forced. So maybe she is on it. Maybe she knows how to insert herself into it and get discovered. Oh, so you think she's already involved in it? I think maybe she's already involved with it. Okay. I think she's already involved with it. She knows she's going to take the place of this prego model who's pregnant with with Thai man's baby. Okay. And that there's something going on there. Okay. I don't know. I don't think so. I think Julie Roberts, America's sweetheart in the mid nineties is completely innocent in this. Yeah. And she, but she's going to be our detective. Oh, you think she's going to be the one who finds it all out. I think she's going to be the one who solves the murder that we have not yet seen. Ooh. But I, hmm. well, and surely hat man, the evil Russian, because, <laughs> because in the nineties the they were all because evil. in the eighties and nineties all Russians in movies were the bad guy. Yeah, it's got to be the Russian guy who's the murderer, right? I mean, and I think he's in the co- in cahoots with Sophia Loren. Oh, maybe so. Hmm. I think 
That's interesting. Maybe it's a dog murder. Maybe the victim is a, a dog. It's the little white dog who's on the wrong person's carpet. You know what? I wouldn't lose any sleep. About the dog murder? Well, it's a little dog. I just- <laughs> You only re- like the big dogs. Are they really dogs? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, don't nobody bash me. Don't put me on blast for hating dogs, y'all. So back off. <laughs> she doesn't but hate dogs. I don't hate dogs. She I'm just doesn't want a small dog of her own. I, that's correct. And so I'm, you know, bloviating at an exaggerated level. But, but the truth is, I, I you know, I, I wouldn't really lose that much sleep. I really don't care for small dogs a whole, whole lot. And yet I had them growing up. Huh. Don't worry. I don't kick dogs or anything. I just, <laughs> you know. I like a big dog. That, that's fine. It's it, totally acceptable to have a preference as long as you're not, <laughs> you know, homicidal. Do, no, uh, do, dog-icidal. dog-icidal. What is that? Can, can, canine-icidal. <laughs> canine-icidal. There we go. Dog-icidal. Dog, what am I, I like, like 12? Better. I like that better, though. <laughs> K nine yeah. is idle. I like okay. it. I like it. No, he's a cute little dog. Um, but maybe yeah. maybe so because they did spend a good time telling us a little bit about these dogs. Uh huh. Yeah, we saw the dogs. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. I didn't know anything about dogs. And you Inspector, know? whoever he is, with the bulldog, uh-huh. we met him. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. And I don't. And he came to introduce himself to. Right to Sophia Loren mm-hmm. with her little white dog. It's a very cute little dog. It is a cute I can dog. imagine that little dog would be quite nice if it's your own little dog well, and you've fallen in love with it since it was the size of a teacup. Well, of course. I mean, of course. Yeah. Of course, you also have to, you know, comb its hair and, you know, do a lot to make it cute. Some people like that. I know. And that's great. Yeah. I'm so happy for them. I'm so happy for them. I feel feel about those kind of dogs the way I feel for people who are so excited to be pregnant. You're like, I'm so happy for you. And I'm so glad it is not me. I know. When I was pregnant, it was an ugly situation. And I, I they, then there was these people who were pregnant, and they they literally did that glowing thing. Yeah. They were just so beautiful, and I was like... Yeah, the glowing thing is called vomiting. The- <laughs> <laughs> you glow after you get sick. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I had, like, the puffy face and the cankles and Aww. the... I mean, it was not pretty. Really? See, yeah. I would have pegged you as one of those. You you would have looked like the the model, all no. pretty and beautiful with the you know the crop oh. top and the belly showing and gorgeous. No, because I mean, I mean it everything grew. Ever. I became the marshmallow puff man. I could have oh. started Ghostbusters five. Oh. It was a uh, rough. Sorry, was, uh, that's okay. That's okay. I uh, you know you get through it, and it is a beautiful time. You just don't always look beautiful while you're going that's through right. it. I never looked pregnant until I was about seven and a half, eight months pregnant. Oh, Because I have a really nice. long torso. And so babies went up instead of out. Aha. Uh-huh. And so when they went out, then it became very obviously that I was pregnant. I had people ask me, are you sure it's not twins? And I'm like, shut up, you person in the gas station. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah. Rando, I don't know. Quit oh. talking to me about how I'm having twins. And people would come up and just touch your belly. Mm, and nope. you're like, I don't know you like that. I don't know you like that. You need to back away now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't want to give you the evil eye. It's hard here in Texas. You didn't have your babies here in Texas. So, no. I mean, but I'm sure, well, you were pregnant in Korea, right? And that's where I got my belly touched a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. they're very, well, hands on with kids, which is actually really delightful. So I had my first son, I was born in um, Boston. Okay. And then he was only like three and a half, four months when we moved to Korea. And um, so in Seoul, I mean, it's a very populated city, obviously, seventh largest in the world. Um, and they're very hands on with kids. And um, so it was great, kind of. But they would come up and just take your baby right out of the stroller, too. Oh, oh, like oh. they just walk up and be like, yeah, Ipa, and walk off, you know? And, and there's the culture is so used to it in a way. So I had studied that and knew what I was coming into when I got there. And so I actually grew to kind of love it. Oh. Um, yeah, kind of love it. Oh. It was oh, great. I good. mean, you could go anywhere and at all times, as long as you were out in public, baby is happy because oh. people love baby. Oh. Oh. Right. So oh, good. yeah. Okay. And then I was pregnant 
and they took really good care of of me and oh. you know like I'd be in the subway and I'd be pregnant and pushing a stroller and mm-hmm. I'd get to the bottom of the stairs and I'm like okay here we go we gotta pick up the stroller and go uh-huh. and I mean I couldn't blink an eye before like four people were there just grabbing sh- bags off my shoulder grabbing the stroller grabbing the baby and Aww. running up the stairs not even say a word you know, like you could hardly say thank you before they would just walked on. It was just part of what you do. So it was nice. That's kind of an awesome way to like live life. You know, where they didn't touch a lot of bellies was in this French studio. No, they were like hands off. It's catchy. Right. Like it's contagious. It's contagious. And oh, by the way, let me blow my cigarette smoke in your face, pregnant woman. Uh huh. It's like, mm mm. Yeah, nope. there was also a bit of like a arrogance. Okay. Like, uh, oh, you had an oops. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I love it. She was wearing that crop top. It was very uh, friends. It was very Rachel and uh-huh. friends, you know. I always thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. I thought it was kind of cool, too. You know why? My because husband it's cheaper. hated it. Yeah. It's cheaper uh, to do just that. Just wear your same old clothes. The regular clothes you own and just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie showing us her thriftiness. <laughs> <laughs> Me and like those white tank tops, the undershirts. Those uh-huh. were, that was my maternity attire right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you think that Julia Roberts is in on it from the start and trying to get discovered in some way? Yeah, I think she's trying to get in there. Yeah. All right. I think she's completely innocent. I don't know why she's in. Why is she in Paris? Paris. I think... I think she wants to sing with Lyle Lovett. <laughs> and she's followed him to Paris. Oh, but that means Lyle Lovett has to be able to sing too. And well, <laughs> do you, are you not a fan of <laughs> Lyle Lovett? I am a fan, but not because he sings well. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got an, an interesting and unusual yes. sound that is unique. I am not picky for people being vocalist to sing. I actually really enjoy kind of the unusual yeah the okay. yeah i love it but you know just yeah joke. <laughs> okay so i think that she wants to sing with lyle lovett okay i wonder if they were married for a time julie roberts <gasps> and lyle lovett I did forgot. they meet, did they meet on this movie i forgot about that oh, i'm so gonna have to find that out before we re- record the rest of this oh my gosh yes we will google that oh my god i just realized okay it's so i think be. Julie Roberts' character wants to be discovered by Lyle Lovett and that she is going to be tapped to be a model, that she's completely innocent in whatever murder comes to be, and she's going to solve the crime for us. And I think the murder is going to be of a dog. Okay, okay. So that's my recap of my predictions for what's going to happen in this movie. Okay, that's a good, that's good. Okay. All right. I kind of agree that the murder might be a dog. Okay. But I, I feel like I feel like probably a human too. So um Okay. So you think I, multiple murders. I yes, yeah, maybe so. I think that's where I'm but yes, I plant my flag there. Okay. Yes, multiple murders. And then I think Julia Roberts, Tie Man and Hat Tie Man are in it together. Okay. And I think that that Tie Man in Paris is the Prego's baby daddy. Okay. Uh huh. Those are some good. And I think that Julia Roberts, part her stick in the whole con is to get discovered and get on that catwalk in that model's place. Okay. Wow. Okay. And I don't know why they chose such an obnoxious tie, except that I think that maybe they haven't met yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so oh. that they're doing the whole. I think that's a given. That's yeah. why he bought two. That's why I he didn't bought realize two. he so bought that, two, so that he can like recognize each other. So they have something, but it's long distance. They actually haven't laid eyes on each other yet. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I think that brings the prediction portion to an end. Okay, it's time to watch the rest of it. (laughs) The rest of this movie. It's going to be banana. I love watching old movies. (laughs) I love it when they're not that old. That's the 90s. What's really funny is all of the uh, outfits right now, they look exactly like all the outfits right now for Gen Z. Oh, yes. Like if you go watch Atypical and like there's high school students in it and you look at it, it's like the same. So the 90s are back. I should have saved my clothes. Yeah. They're a little bit different. They're just enough different that you would, I mean, you you would probably look vintage. I would look like a sausage, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot skinnier in the 90s. 
Well, well, everything goes to different places once yeah. you get older, you know, and <laughs> gravity and, you know. But it's so fun. I mean, I love to see it come back just a bit more refined, like to nail it on the head what we were trying to achieve in the 90s. And I'm like, yes. It's pretty fun. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll be back with the rest of of this coverage. We'll see how many of our predictions came true. Very, very exciting. And thank you for joining us, letting us stand in for Josh and Skinner for this brief time so that they can have a little relaxation. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Skinner, for letting us come on and hope you have a good rest of your time. Yeah. I'm Josh. And I'm Skinner. And we host PredictoCast. On this podcast, we watch the first 10 minutes of movies we know nothing about and then try to predict what happens next. It's like very low-stakes gambling. We've covered movies with talking dogs, fake legs, sexual medical dummies, and Santa Claus. New episodes are released every week, and you can find us wherever you get podcasts or at predictocast.com. We predict you're going to love this show. All right. Do you want to know how well we did on our predictions? Well, you can find PredictoCast over on Twitter at PredictoCast. They know special characters, any of that. Just predict, P-R-E-D-I-C-T-O-C-A-S-T. Or we will also put links on our own social media. You can find us on Facebook, Killer Fun, exploring the intersection of crime and entertainment. You can find us on Twitter, at Killer Fun Pod, or you can send us an email, killerfunpodcast at gmail.com. I'm a little spoiler alert. Our predictions were not great, but we sure do have a lot of fun talking about it. So next time in a couple weeks, we'll be back with a regular episode. And oh my gosh, it's so great. We're so happy that Joe is back We're going to cover the second season, well, the first episode of the second season of You that's now on Netflix. We covered the first season not long after it went to Netflix from Lifetime back in 2019, and season two is here, and it is a wild ride and super fun to talk about. So we hope that you'll join us, and we'll see you soon. Forge audio. Dream it. Build it. Share it.